Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, people of God. Welcome to another edition of the Daily Fountain Devotional of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion for today, Saturday, 5th of August, 2023. It is my prayer that the good Lord will bless us as we go through his word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you are help in ages past and our hope for years to come. Thank you for the gift of sleeping and waking up healthy and sound this morning. Thank you for your mercies that you have showered upon us. Even in our sins, even in our unrighteousness, it has pleased you to continually shower us with the gift of your mercy and grace. We are not ungrateful for this. And we say be thou exalted. Lord, we ask that you speak to us in a language we understand. Open our hearts, open our eyes, open our ears, and open our understanding. That the entrance of your word this morning, we bring light, we bring life. I will bring salvation to your children. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our topic for today says, Between a good name and riches. Between a good name and riches. And our text is taken from Proverbs chapter 22, from verse 1 to verse 17. Proverbs 22, 1 to 17. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns as nests are in the way of the forward. But he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scorner, and the contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserveth knowledge, and he overthrew the words of the transgressor. The slothful man said, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolishness is born in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. He that oppressed the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Bow down thy ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thy heart unto my knowledge. This is the word 
of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Once again, our topic this morning is between a good name and riches. Between a good name and riches. Shakespeare, in one of his plays, echoes out these wise words through the mouth of Lago. Good name in man and woman, dear my Lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. End of quote. Have you ever thought about the status of your name? Would you say it is good? Do you even care how those around you view your name? I'm not talking about the very name you bear. But what I'm talking about is what that very name implies. When people hear your name mentioned, what do they immediately think about you? When we talk about a good name here, what we are talking about is your integrity, your reputation, and the character you possess inside. It identifies who you are from a moral and ethical standpoint. Essentially, it is what you are all about. A good name is what you are all about. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Wow! This is really shocking and amazing. The good name you have is better than all the money in the whole world. Does this not sound odd? In this our present generation that has been bedeviled with the mentality of get rich quick syndrome. A generation where people, old and young, male and female alike, are ready to do anything just to become rich, including Yahoo Plus, ritual killing, and indulging in many unskip unspeakable things with the slogan that the end justifies the means. How you get to the end doesn't matter to them. And you are telling such a person that a good name is to be chosen rather than riches. Of course, it sounds very odd. But as odd as it sounds, it remains the undisputable word of God. And whether you believe it or not, a good name still provides more value than money, even in this our generation. Why is a good name to be chosen rather than riches? Number one, a good name provides stability. When you have a good name, people can trust you. That trust is a stabilizing factor in your relationship with people. They know what to expect from you. They can lean on you. They can lean on your, on your decision with absolute confidence. Those whose good name has been tarnished as a result of choosing riches over a good name have a difficult time building trust and consequently maintaining friendship. Their motives will always be questioned as insincere. Even when they have a sincere motive for whatever they do, People will still think they are being concerned about themselves and their pockets alone with little or no consideration for others because their good name has been tarnished. I believe you don't want to be in a situation where people don't trust you. You don't want to be in such a situation. 
Trust helps relationship and friendship to grow deeper. And your good name will go a long way in making that happen. Number two reason why a good name is to be chosen rather than riches is that a good name is eternal. Riches are fleeting. They could be with us today and tomorrow they are gone. And of course, you know that we can't take riches with us when we leave this world at the time of our death. No matter your possession, whether rich or poor, it is just best six feet. No houses, no cars, just six feet. Nothing goes with you. Therefore, one should not trust in riches for they are not steady and they are not reliable. A good name is, however, theoretically eternal. Would you like people to talk good of you years after you are gone? Horatius Bonner, in the hymn, fading away like the stars of the morning, says in stanza two, only the truth that in life we have spoken, only the seed that on earth we have sown, these shall pass onward when we are forgotten. Fruits of the harvest and what we have done. And the chorus, of course, we say, only remembered. Only remembered by what we have done. Thus could we pass from the earth and the toiling. Only remembered by what we have done. You will not be remembered by the riches or wealth you have acquired. But only by the truth you have spoken. The good seeds you have sown. And the good names you acquired. These are what you will be remembered for. Again, scripture says in Mark chapter 8, verses 36 to 37. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? How will your legacy be remembered and portrayed by your family, friends or colleagues once you are gone? We then focus on the value of your life and the good name you have you made while on earth. Or will they only remember that you cared about yourself and your worth alone? Furthermore, your character will have an influence on those around you, especially your children. Kids, children, are more likely to model the character traits of their parents and others who have position of influence over them. And verse 6 of our text for today we say, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. He did not say teach a child, but train up a child. There is a difference between teach and training. In teaching, you tell the child what you want him to do, and you watch him do it. But in training, you tell the child what you want him to do. You show them as an example by doing it. They watch you do it to emulate how you did it. And then they come back to do it the same way you did it. That is training. And of course, the Bible says, in the way he should go. Not in the way you want him to go. There is a way you as a parent want your child to go. There is a way the economy of the nation wants the child to go. There is a way the societal standard wants the child to go. And also there is a way that pet pressures want the child to go. But you are to train this child in the way he should go, which is the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. That is the way you should train that child. Therefore, you cannot make riches and money your priority. Without thinking of how to acquire a good name. And you still want your child to value a good name more than riches. It's not possible. You cannot be a drunkard and a smoker. And you want your child not to drink or smoke. You must show them an exemplary life that they will emulate. And so if you want your child to value a good name and reputation. Then you as a parent must value a good name and reputation more than riches. They must see it evident in you. In that way, 
the best part of you can theoretically be passed down from generation to generation, thus making your good name eternal. Number three reason why a good name is to be chosen than rich riches is that good name brings loving memory. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 ends with this phrase, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. As we are to prefer good name over riches, so we are also to prefer loving favor over silver and gold. People will love you for having and maintaining your integrity, and they will be ready to stand by you at all costs. We can live without riches, but a life that doesn't experience love is a devastating life. Joseph, in Genesis chapter 39, verses 7 to 12, chose a good name and to maintain his integrity and reputation over sleeping with Potiphar's wife to become rich. One can imagine the benefits he stands to gain if he has slept with Potiphar's wife. Of course, he will be a great man. But his greatness will be limited within the walls of Potiphar's household. His greatness will never pass that wall. And of course, his reputation, his name will be stained. But rather, he's refused to tarnish his good name. He refused to tarnish his image and reputation. He refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife. He knew the importance of choosing a good name over riches. And so, he refused everything that Potiphar's wife had to offer, but accepted to maintain his good name and integrity. Also, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 to 11, decided not to soil his good name in exchange for the things of the world. Scripture said that the devil took him and showed him the riches of the world. Fleets of cars, mansions, choice mansions and houses, choice properties in choice areas. And the devil said to him, this I will give you. On one condition, he gave Jesus the condition. But Jesus refused to soil his name. Jesus refused to bow down to the devil. Because he knows the importance of maintaining his good name and reputation. This very decision that Jesus took is the decision that many youths in this generation has failed to take. The devil has taken them out and has shown our youths, our generation, the riches of this world. Choice cars and houses in choice areas. And he has given them a condition. And rather than choosing a good name, they decided to bow at the devil. To tarnish their good image, to tarnish their reputation, and soil their hands by putting their hands into some despicable acts in order to become rich. May God have mercy on this generation in the name of Jesus. On the other hand, Gehazi, servant of Elijah, preferred riches over good name and reputation in 2 Kings chapter 5, 20 to 27. Naaman came to Elisha with riches. This Elisha refused. And Gehazi went behind, using the name of Elisha to lie to Gehazi, just to take things of the world. I know the result. If you want to know the result, read your Bible. Scripture said that the leprosy of Naaman became the portion of Gehazi and his generation. Ah! Rather than maintaining his good name and integrity, what he gained was leprosy. And Aeneas and Sephira is another example of a couple that decided in their heart to tarnish their good name and image and to tarnish their reputation. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, the land they sold belonged to them. The money belonged to them. They were not forced in selling the land. They should have as well kept their money. But scripture said they hid half and they brought half to, the, to Peter. That is, 
they, re- they stole from themselves. In the book of Malachi, God said that we are robbing God. But here is Ananias and Sapphira robbing themselves. And when they got to the feet of the apostle, Peter asked, Is this all you got from the sales of the land? They said, Yes. They needed money. They loved money more than their name and reputation. And you know what? They died in it. They died in it. I wonder who ate that money. They tarnished their good name and reputation because of money. May God have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. Beloved child of God, it is important we note here that riches, having money, is not evil. And there is nothing wrong in becoming rich. But a good name is still better than riches. Therefore, we must not soil our hands or tarnish, tarnish our good names in order to become rich. If you must be rich, let it come from the right source. As believers, we must have the fear of God while carrying out our daily businesses. Either as civil servants, as traders, as artisans, as students. Whatever we do, we must have the fear of God. Hear what verse 4 of our text says. Verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. True riches comes only from the fear of the Lord and uprightness. Remember the two questions asked in Mark chapter 8 verses 36 to 37. The first question is, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And the second question asks, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 we say, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. God loves upright people who fear him and walk before him. And you must know that those who remain faithful to God will receive riches, honor, and life at his own appointed time, God's appointed time. Therefore, if you must choose between a good name and riches, I encourage you, choose a good name. However, if along the line, you have sold your hands and tarnished your good name while pursuing riches, you need to come back to God this morning. You need to ask for his mercy. You need to pray for a new beginning. And you need to seek the grace of God to help you live an upright life. Let us pray. Bow down your head wherever you are. But adventure, you have tarnished your name. You have soiled your hands. Just in a moment, ask God for mercy. His mercy can locate you wherever you are now. Ask that God will have mercy upon you. Lord, we ask for mercy upon your children. In any way we have soiled our hands, thereby tarnishing our images, our reputation and good name, in order to become rich, have mercy upon us and draw us back to you. Help us, Lord, to maintain a life of integrity. Help us to maintain an upright, a life of uprightness. Help us to maintain the biblical standard which you have given to us. And Lord, as we follow you uprightly, as we imbibe the fear of the Lord in our daily activities, bless us. Because when we are blessed, we will not soil our hands trying to look for riches. Bless us indeed. We desire blessings from you. Bless us and cause that your blessings will remain and abide with us. Thank you, Father, for answering us. For we know that you have answered us. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you as you go out today. Please. Maintain your good name, maintain your reputation, maintain your integrity, and the blessings of God will remain your portion. In Jesus' name, amen.
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.